I think when we've gone through difficult things in life, whether a divorce or some other big life change, a lot of people, including myself, turn to travel to rediscover and find themselves again. And in today's episode, I'm joined in this podcast mini series with Laura Erickson, someone I'm doing group travels trips with us. You should come on a badass adventure with us. We talk about how our lives and our travel looks different. It looks different both now that we are older, by no means old, now that we are after or at 40, and how our travel looks different post-divorce. And we talk about like where we started from as like kids and young adults and what travel looked like for us then versus how that kind of evolved over time and what that looks like now. And I think and sticking around to the end is an important one for this episode because we talk about how our travel and our lifestyles inspire a lot of people and they can't figure out how we're you know able to do all the things and so confident and just doing it and we don't we are scared we do it scared we do it scared and we do it not so confidently but we just do it anyway because on the other side of that fear is a reward that makes it worth it every single time we share those stories in today's podcast episode but if you're new here welcome to another episode of Everyday Badassery. I'm your host, Christine Lozada. This is a podcast meant to inspire you to be just 1% more badass today than you were yesterday. Today's podcast is a perfect example of those 1% moments, those learnings over time. We had to go on the journey that we went on, divorce included, with the relationships we used to be in, traveling, I don't wanna call it traveling, I'll say vacationing to the same old resorts time and time again, not really seeing the world, but just escaping to what felt like the same place over and over again, except it just happened to be a different resort in a different country. And how now we appreciate travel and have become travelers and define what a traveler versus a vacationer is in a totally different way. This is part of a mini series with Laura in which we are sharing and spilling our guts about ourselves so that you know that you are invited to come have a badass adventure with us. What are we like and what's this trips? What are these trips that we're putting together that we want you to join us on? More info on that is in the show notes below, but without further ado, let's bring in Laura. I am Laura Erickson. I have a group travel company called Laura Erickson Group Trips, and I take people on off the bat, off the bat, off the beaten path experiences around the world. I'm already messing it up. <laughs> oh, you're doing amazing, and we are going to have a badass right. off the beaten path experience with Laura. So make sure you check out the info on the group trips below. But today's topic to me is actually really important because I feel like I talk to so many, both men and women who are either after 40 or post-divorce trying to find who they are as a traveler, who want to take the trip, but feel some kind of hesitation or block to be able to take that trip. And so you and I both fall under the bucket of after 40 and divorced, but I would love to start this podcast episode with like, what's one of the biggest and most rewarding things about how you travel now versus how you traveled before. I'd love to hear that first. I think I travel with so much more intention and purpose than I used to. Um, and I, and I think that's been like a slow progression. I don't think it just like I got divorced and then it was <laughs> like, you know, it didn't happen overnight, but I think traveling more by myself. Um, and when I say, you know, we, we had the whole solo, traveler combo like by myself doesn't necessarily mean I was alone but traveling with different people traveling with friends I think I've just slowly discovered a different way to travel that fits me better um that fits me with where I'm at right now in my life and I think I've just discovered the for me like so much more purpose and intention behind travel it's it's been more transformational for me than it was when i was younger i like that and i we will in this episode be diving into what that means cuz the way you build your group trips is very intentional and also why i like you 
I would say I feel something <laughs> similar to what you're talking about. And I would say it was, it was after my divorce that I really started to explore solo travel. And that's when in, in those trips, it was with the intentionality of like, almost like finding myself again and understanding what I want both out of life and out of travel and what I need out of life and out of travel. And it was through that that helped me to understand who I wanted to be as a traveler. And I made that transition from, uh, and there's debate over this, I'm very aware of that. I made my transition from being a vacationer to a traveler where I wanted more out of the trips I was taking and I wanted to be intentional about how I was exploring a place beyond just the top 10 trip advisor, most touristy things to do in that place. I wanted more than that. And I also wanted to understand like just who I was. Um, and so that's the biggest change because now as a traveler, like what's rewarding for me is I understand what I want out of these trips. And so I can build and do the trip that is exactly the experience that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And whereas before, you know, I, I go to a place kind of like, oh yeah, like everyone says this place is so cool. And like, I don't necessarily know why. And then I spend like uh, this crap load of money, go to this place that's like, Oh, okay, that's not really what I expected. And I, I, it's not for me. And so now it's like, it's very clear, like where I want to go and why and what I want to do there and all of the other things. Basically travel is just way, way better now. But yeah. I would love for us to bring it back. Let's bring it back to like, who were we as, as vacationers or travelers? Like, who were you as a kid? Uh, and then who were you as, as, as married, Laura, and who are you now as after 40 divorced, Laura? In terms of travel, you mean, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny. when you, The second you just said, who were you as a kid? Like my first, the word that popped in my head was an asshole. Um, <laughs> I, I remember, I, I think like, I remember like, my parents taking me to these amazing places. And I just remember being kind of whiny and like unappreciative. No, zero appreciation. That was, yeah. Me. I'm just going to yeah. hang out in the hotel. Like did not want to see the place. Yeah. Like, me. are like just basically like the, are we done here yet? Like mm -hmm. basically the people I can't stand when it comes to travel. <laughs> like that was me as a kid. Cause I had no appreciate. And I think for kids, you know, that's not uncommon. Like your parents drag you around because they have to, or because it's easier. Um, they don't probably want you there. <laughs> um, and you don't want to be there either, probably. Cause you're not, you know, kids want to be at like Disney and yeah. Yeah. They wanna, that was me. They, they want to do those like typical kid things. And I was fortunate to have parents who didn't just do all the typical kid things with me, but as mm -hmm. a kid, I don't think I had that appreciation that I do now when I look back and I'm like, wow, my parents took me to Venezuela when I was 12 years old. And, oh, you know, we, we did lots of like camping and hiking and, you know, just not touristy things. And at the time I probably thought I should be in Florida on a beach or, you know, at <laughs> Disney or whatever, like what normal kids did. But yeah. So as a kid, I would say, you know, I definitely did not have that appreciation. And even as a young adult, you know, I lived in Spain, I look back, to when I lived abroad in Spain, um, still probably a little bit of an asshole. Like <laughs> I, I've gone back to Spain several times since then and um, really felt like I had to redo all of the same things that I had done when I was 21 because I, mm -hmm. although I checked those boxes and did those things, one, I don't, I barely have the memories anymore because it's just mm -hmm. so long ago, but also like, I just, I still don't think I had the appreciation when I was that young. So when I've gone back, I've, I've redone a lot of the things and gone to the places I've been before just because I wanted to see them through a different lens that yeah. I don't think I had. And I think a lot of people think like, oh, you've already been somewhere, like it's done. You don't ever have to go there again. And I would argue sometimes when I go back, I either love something more or sometimes mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I don't like this at all. Like, what, what did I see in this place? Or like, what did I like about this city when I was, you know, however old? And I think like, that's been really impactful for me too. Cause I'm, I'm like, I also realize like I've grown. Yeah. Something that I thought was really cool when I was 21. Now I'm kind of like, eh. 
you're a different person now. Yeah. And that's one of the things that people don't understand about the way I travel now, which is I don't have this list that I'm just trying to check off each place to say I went there. Because like for whom? For whom do you need to check off all these countries or check off all these places for beyond yourself? I'm not trying to impress somebody with where I've gone or how many countries I've seen. And I actually recently had to count how many countries I've been to because I was like, I, I, it's not actually something I keep track of. And <laughs> given I'm divorced, I have two passport books and one of them is not located in the place that I live. And so I was like, I actually have no idea. Um, but one of the things about that is like, I love to go back to the same places because then you can try something different or explore it in a new way or change your mind about something or I don't fill in the blank. Like there is mm -hmm. a new experience every time I go back to a place, which is why nowadays, like I love to travel back to the same places again and again. Tell Damn. me one thing. Tell me one thing about young Laura in Spain versus Laura returning to Spain. Like oh. what's 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 one adventure you had before versus one adventure you had now? Oh, uh, young Laura definitely drank a lot more. That's for sure. <laughs> um, it's probably not helpful in remembering everything I did when I was younger. That's a photo of uh, <laughs> Yeah, but cameras back then weren't good. Mm, so, mm. you know, we didn't have iPhones. We didn't have social media. Yeah, fair. Yeah. yeah, you had to take the film to Costco to go develop it at 20. Yeah, you had, to develop, photo. you had to develop all your photos. They weren't good quality. So, like, even if I do have some photos somewhere, like, where are you going to dig those up from? But, I mean, I could find them if I really wanted to. But they're not good. They're not good photos. So, you know, we also forget like how easy it is now to go back to, that's why I save stories on Instagram. Cause at any given time I can go back to a trip and be like, oh yeah, I went here. I went here. Mm. I can remember what I did. Um, Cause I can't remember everything I've done. So yeah, um, that, that definitely made a difference, but gosh, what did I do in Spain when I was younger? I don't know. I was, like I said, it was kind of, I look back, I just feel spoiled and ungrateful mm. almost. Mm. Um, not that I didn't appreciate it because of course I did, but reflecting back on it now, I just think I have such a different appreciation for like, for example, I was just in Barcelona a few weeks ago. Um, I wasn't really there necessarily by choice. It was just where my flight was. I had a long layover. Um, and honestly, I, I sat in my room for a while, just sleep, catching up on sleep. And then, which I'm sure you can relate to, because I'm sure people are like, you're in Barcelona and you're like sleeping in. And I'm like, I don't need to check a bunch of things off a list. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. already seen all the hot spots there. All I wanted to do when I was in Barcelona was find like a good tapas restaurant mm -hmm. and drink some wine. That was the only thing on my list. Goals. Goals. Um, <laughs> which I think that is the appeal of going back to places you've been is like, it's so much less stressful when you can just mm. be like okay i've already kind of seen the you know the highlights of this place but now i can wander now i can just find something without yeah. feeling stressed like i'm missing you know i feel like that i feel that way about new york i've been to new york many times i've done all the i mean there's always new things of course but i've done all the the things now when i go my friend and i we he makes up like a little east village um food tour and we bop around to restaurants and we just wander. And that's to me like the best part about New York. It's not that I need to go see Times Square and that I need to, you know, whatever. Like that's, it. I have no agenda when I'm there and that's the beauty of it. I love- I love that. I love for going to a place without a uh, itinerary, which is ironic for what I do for a living. But, <laughs> but you go without the itinerary because adventure finds you and then you can understand how to create the right itinerary for other people. But I just feel like it is a necessary part of how I have learned to travel now, which is something I call wander lost, not wanderlust, wander lost, like literally wandering lost. And mm -hmm. I always, in all of my trips, I mean, New York is an easy one for that, but I always, in all of my trips, no matter where I'm at, I leave time, like, I don't want to call it scheduled time, but just time that I know I'm not doing anything. And I will go walk and look at the murals or get onto a bus, a public bus. And I don't even know where it's going to go. And let's just find out or jump on the subway or a train or a something, or you get in an Uber and you just tell them, 
I don't actually have a destination. Like I put one in there, but drive me the long way. I'll, you know, I'll tip you. Know, it works better with taxis. Um, yeah. You know, and then they can just be on the meter and just drive you around. Like take mm-hmm. me the long way to this place. Um, and then they will give you the tips and things like that. And when you leave time to be wander lost, adventure finds you like guaranteed Absolutely. every time. And that's one of, for me, going from being a vacationer to a traveler has been one of the biggest changes. And one of the reasons why I love going back to a place and part of the reason why, to be totally honest, I've asked you to take, like, take us to Mexico city is because you've done this a lot. And like, you know, the things, and that's one of the best things is like to go with someone who knows the ins and outs. And for me, when I travel back to the same places, it now becomes how can I, you know, meet more of the locals or spend time with more of the locals? And I mean, I'll be honest, pickleball has made that very easy, even in mm-hmm. other countries. Like I was playing pickleball on Bonaire Island. Love it. Um, and it's one of the best ways to get all oh, like, I didn't know about that restaurant or like, oh, I didn't know about that live music spot or like, oh, I, I had no idea that once a week, so-and-so place does this event. Like that's how you find out about like the intricacies of a place. And then a place that you kind of liked becomes a place that you love. And then a place that you mm-hmm. love comes a place that you cannot stop going back to. And that to me, that's traveling. And it's like, Absolutely. almost like you live somewhere else in the world and can experience it in an, like a second home. Like Bonaire to me is a second home to me. Yeah. And I think when you talk about the locals too, like now that I, I repeat a lot of places now because of my group trips and mm-hmm. yeah, would it be nice if I could go new places? Sure. But the thing I love about it, I think about like Morocco in particular is I know so many people there now. So Damn. I can go, like my friends are always like, you have friends in the Sahara desert. Like, do you realize how cool that is? And I see the same guys every time I go and they all like wait for me to come. And we meet up every year, sometimes multiple times a year. And now I've met these guys, you know, four or five times. So you get to actually develop like relationships with people who are still there. When you come back, I have a guy in the, who owns the tannery in Fez and like, he's, He's on Nas Daily. He's got like a really fascinating (laughs) story. And like I, every time now I just message him and say, I'm coming, you know, and like, and I get to see him every time. Like, it's not just the places. It's also the people that usually you get to go back to and see again and again. And like they, and they're like, oh my God, you came back. Like how often, you know, from, from a local's perspective, does a traveler or tourist come back again and say, Hey, do you remember me? So it's also just like a really cool thing for them to see that people are like coming back to their country over and over again. That is so true because, okay, let's bring it back to like this travel as like a child bringing it to travel to uh, being in a relationship versus post because like uh, (laughs) as a vacationer, so for me as a child, I was exactly the same as you, like ridiculously spoiled, had no idea how good I had it, had no intention of like exploring the world. And then like, as I started to grow up as like a teenager, still traveling with my family, then like I started to get the itch of like, I wanted to see it beyond the itinerary, like the very strict itinerary they were giving me, but like they wouldn't allow me to. And so like, I felt like this strained vacationer. And then fast forward, like once I was in my relationship, Uh, Because I was in a relationship for nine years before I was married. We were married for a short time. We were only married for like two years before I immediately knew that things were not right. That is a different podcast episode. Check that one out. Um, But when uh, when I think about how we vacation together, it was very much couples vacation. Like we'd go to Mm -hmm. these like romantic resorts or like beach Mm -hmm. locations and Like I think about the story we're telling now about interacting with the locals or interacting with these people that like become, become the place and become our friends and we travel back to see them and have a new and different experience with them each time. That was not what happened on, on Mm -hmm. these vacations I took, you know, like if I, if I interacted with anyone, it would be another couple that was at the same resort because, you know, we were sitting at dinner together or we were sitting near each other at the bar. But like, it was very much about you and your partner, which, I mean, I'm very lucky to be able to have gone to these resorts and travel in that way. But it's like, if you ask me what I saw and be like a a relaxing beach and like, or if it was in a city, like a couple popular hotspots, which is still cool. But 
it was vacationing and not traveling. Who are you as a traveler in your relationship? Um, again, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the using one word to describe myself. I feel like lazy would be, <laughs> would be the the term that I would use. I, you know, when I was married, we were busy, you know, we both had careers and when it came time to like plan a vacation, I feel like it was like, let's find the easiest, most convenient thing to do because neither of us have the time or energy to plan something. And like, then you have to agree, you know, and it's like this whole thing. Yeah. So when you just say like, we, we went to Cozumel, that was what me and my ex-husband did. He loved to dive. And so like, I, and I loved Cozumel, like beautiful place, but you know, I just agreed to do it year after year because it was easy. We'd go back to the same place, you know, all you had to do is book your flight, book your hotel and you knew the rest of it and you didn't have to think about it and it's beautiful. And you know, it was fine. Um, but like fine, isn't good enough for me. And I think, which is also why I'm divorced. Um, so yeah, I guess I just feel like I did the easy thing. I did the most convenient thing. I didn't think outside the box. It was just, you get stuck in that routine of like, this is just what we do now. Yeah. Um, and we, we did plan a trip to Spain. Well, I should say we, I planned a trip for us to go to Spain right before, um, we separated, um, but that I, I'm like, we were together 10 years and really that was the only trip we took together. That wasn't Mexico or something in the U S yeah. which is just kind of crazy to, to think about for 10 years of my life. Like that's really all I did. Yeah. And, and now it's like, things by, are different now. <laughs> now. I was just telling my friend last night, cause I'm like, your girl is tired. Like by July, I will have been in nine countries this year. Yeah. And that I'm not saying that like in a, oh my God, look at me kind of way. I'm saying it in like, I'm tired. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I get that. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, it's, it's just such a difference, such a different life than I had. We've built a new life for yourself post relationship. I certainly and have. <laughs> one of the things that I've heard that I felt like, oh, and I'm so glad I don't feel this anymore. So for me, in my relationship, like <laughs> you have to, you have to agree, right? You have to agree on a place you're going to. And, and this is actually, to be totally honest, one of the large parts about why I got a divorce. Because in the beginning, when we would vacation together, we would like talk about it. We'd agree on a place and we'd go have an adventure. And our adventures in the beginning were like epic. Like we would ride bikes from Bangkok, Thailand to Siem Reap, Cambodia over seven days. Like riding through rice paddies, like having an adventure of a lifetime. We would uh, go to Puerto Rico and then take an obscure boat out to an island that you are not allowed to get onto because there's lots of live mines. And we would go scuba diving around that island because the reef is untouched since no one spends time at that island and like see the craziest things in the water. Like these were the adventures we used to have. And over time, he started to change to no longer be adventurous. And he really started to become a homebody as he got older. And as he became a homebody, he did not want me to take the trips. He did not want to go on the trips anymore. And so our trips then transitions into being the very couples, resorts, couples, fill in the blank where I mean, you could be anywhere in the world. It didn't matter. It was the same all-inclusive thing with sunshine mm -hmm. and beach. Um, and you just happened to get some kind of passport stamp while you were there. And it was inconvenient to get there in some way, one, one way or another. And in and, and that time of our relationship, I no longer got to choose. I no longer got to, we needed to decide. It was just whatever he wanted. And I was taught, as my, a lot of people don't realize my parents are immigrants. They're from the Philippines. They were born in the Philippines. And my mom taught me that, you know, relationships are not this equal thing where the man and the woman are equals with each other. No, no. The Filipino woman serves her man. You mm -hmm. are at his, and I will just say it this way. You are at his mercy. You do what he wants you to do. And if you think that you have a choice or you can do your own thing, like, mm -mm, like it don't work that way. And 
as he transitioned into being this homebody, I transitioned into what I had learned from my mother and just let him make all the, make all the shots. And as he called all the shots, I started to no longer vacation and was definitely no longer traveling. And I did not like that anymore. Like I did not love the confines of my four cubicle walls and my beige ball and chain that matched those walls. Like it was just miserable. And like we had everything. And yet I felt trapped in this life of living in amazing cities of New York and San Francisco, feeling like I couldn't go see what the rest of the world had to offer. And that was just like, that was such a large part of how I knew I needed to get out there and build, going back to what you're talking about, I'm tired for a new reason these days. I'm tired not because my life was that restrained Christine. I'm tired these days because I am adventuring around the world exactly the way I want to be. And I, your girl needs a break. Like I need a rest. <laughs> like, uh, you're a great problem to have now. Yeah. yeah. And it looks different way problems. different. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Cause I think about, um, when I just mentioned how we went to that, we went on that trip to Spain right before we, um, separated that trip was the catalyst for me hmm. getting a divorce. Hmm. I, I had this moment while I was there and I was like, this is who I used to be. Like I used mm-hmm. to be this person that lived in Spain as a 21 year old and moved to Spain when I was 22 without a place to live. You know, it brought me back to like, this is who I am. And when I got home, I think I left my husband within two weeks because of that. Mm. Like it just, I, something in me just snapped. I had like this moment of realization of like, Mm. I am not, I am not happy and I am not the person that I want to be or should be. And going on that trip made me kind of realize it. And that was just kind of the beginning to the next stage. (laughs) So powerful. I think about how one of, for me, what was a very important trip to take, he had spent months convincing me not to take it. And it was going, it was a trip to go to Vietnam. I had been to Vietnam before. um, And my cousin was going to get married. One of my closest cousins was going to get married and she wanted to get married in Vietnam and the whole family was going to fly out and all her friends were going to fly out. And I wanted to go so badly to show her my love and celebrate her. And he just kept trying to convince me like, you can't go, like, don't go. It's so far, super expensive, especially if I don't go, it will be, you know, even more expensive for lodging and all the other things, transportation. And I was like, you're right, you're right, you're right. I shouldn't go. I shouldn't go. Like, you know, like my mom taught me, like, listen to the man, like he let him make the decisions. And I, and I caught myself in a moment, like when I was talking to my cousin about how she excited she was about her wedding. And I'm just like, of course I want to be there. Like, I am not going to miss this for the world. And by, by that point, like I just knew, and that was one of my catalysts. Uh, for knowing I needed to tell him that we needed to separate. And it was, <laughs> it was actually on that Vietnam trip. Um, by then I had already left him, but it was on that Vietnam trip that I had finalized all our divorce papers. Um, and I was just like, this is absolutely the right thing. And I remember finalizing those divorce papers and then jumping on the back of some random motorbike with two other people on board and like just hitting the streets of Vietnam and going to the night markets and eating $1 pho while squatting in the middle of a sidewalk. Cause that's how you eat out there. And just being like this, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. And this is the right choice. Like I would not be doing this if I was still in a relationship with him. Yeah. And I think I, I think it's fine when people are in a relationship and their partner doesn't want to do the same things, but they, I don't want to say they they still let them let them is not the right word to use, but they're mm-hmm. they're still supportive of. I see this a lot with like my Morocco trip because I tend to get a lot of women on it, and it's not a place that a lot of for whatever reason a lot of men don't seem to be interested in that trip. And so I I do get a lot of married women on that trip, and they're like, yeah, you know, I wanted I've always wanted to go to Morocco. My husband has no interest in it, so you know he's going to go fishing, and I'm going to Morocco with a bunch of women. I think like that's fine. Um, it's when your partner is holding you back and telling yeah. you you can't do something or guilting you 
for wanting to do something. And I hear that too, quite a bit. It's like, my husband's trying to talk me out of it, or my husband says Mm -hmm. I shouldn't do this, or, you know, he's in my, and it doesn't even have to be a husband. I mean, friends, family, people in in your ear telling, trying to talk you out of doing something. Um, And it usually has nothing to do with you. It's usually all about their own projections. But yeah, I I see that a lot. And I, I also think when people get divorced, like you said, I, they, they just kind of like free themselves. And usually the number one thing people tell me they want to do when they get divorced is travel. Hmm. I actually met with a woman. Um, she has a divorce podcast that I was on a year or two ago. And we, we were kind of strategic partners for a year. And she said, I want to partner with you because the number one thing that women tell me when they get a divorce is that they want to travel. It's, it's, it's like on everyone's list. I mean, of course, everybody wants to travel, but when you kind of, like I said, you kind of like feel free for the first time get yeah. a relationship, whether good or bad, you still have like a sense of freedom, whether you want it or not. I think all of a sudden people don't know what to do with themselves. Hmm. Um, especially for women who are older, above 40, above 50, if they've been in a relationship for 20, 30 years, and all of a sudden, like they don't have that person telling them what to do, they, they're they lost. Yeah. Um, I've had women that have never flown by themselves before. They've never booked their own airfare. They've, mm. they've never done these, you know, seemingly basic tasks related to travel because they've had somebody doing it for them or just telling them what to do. So it is very interesting to have um, older women on my trips because some of them are experienced and some of them are less experienced than the younger ones. Yeah. Yeah. I can see how doing a group trip when you're in that place where you can kind of find yourself together with a group could be really powerful, you know, cause like I, I, like so many women that I talk to who've never traveled alone. I mean, the idea of going to another country by yourself is, is just, it's a lot, especially if you've, you know, consistently been with somebody or have never done it yourself in a long time. Um, it's hard to break out of that. I have a woman I just had coffee with the other day who's coming to Cuba with me. She just got a divorce and she's, she's leaving the U S for the first time. Like she's getting her passport and going to Cuba on a group trip by herself. And I, I just think, I'm like, gosh, like, can you imagine being in your forties, fifties? I don't know how old she is for the first time getting your passport and hopping on a plane, going to Cuba and just like, sh- she was very nervous. And I was like that rightfully so that's gotta yeah. be a terrifying feeling to, to be doing that by yourself and to all of all places to Cuba. So it's, but it's also like so empowering that someone's willing to do that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay. You know what I want to try to do right now? Ooh, this might be an interesting one. So as though, as though you were talking to your younger self who might not believe what you do now, perfect example of nine countries this year. And we're only, uh, we're filming this in May of 2024. So that's kind of a lot of countries in a short amount of time. We're not in December, we're in May. Um, tell a story to your younger self about like, a trip that she wouldn't believe that you recently took. And then what like advice would you give her? I wonder if I can even do this. Let me try. Let me try. Let me take Let me take a stab and try this. Um, like my old previous self, and I'm going to fast forward to like when I was in my maybe late twenties, my late twenties self wouldn't believe that. Well, first of all, so going back to the, you know, it's like just who, whoever is in your ear uh, like kind of convincing you to travel or not travel. Like, and it's why, like for me, my transition from my, my boyfriend now meatball is nothing, nothing like my ex-husband. Like meatball is super independent, loves that I'm independent, like supports me, is always looking for ways to support me. And so the amount of solo trips that I take without him is a lot. And he's always like, yeah, do your thing. Like, like he learned how to use WhatsApp and like do, do FaceTime messaging through it and stuff. It's really cute. He also got a passport for me. Um, and so I had taken this trip where he was like, yeah, go to Mexico, do the thing where I just wanted to start exploring Tulum. I was so curious about Tulum because all the Instagram photos look amazing. And I was just like sold on Tulum because the Instagram photos looked amazing. 
And I went there alone. And when I got there, I could, all I thought was like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is this? Like, really? Like, this, this is not, this Instagram is not, land. yes, this is not that. I understand where that photo was taken, but everything around where that photo was taken is not what I signed up for. And I realized that this trip was not what it, I was, what I had, what I thought was, was going to be, but I instead turned it into something insanely amazing just for me. And so I was like, okay, so this is not what I expected. I am going to like, and I went back and this is like from years of learning of about myself through solo travel. I want to adventure hard on a bicycle. Like I want to ride my bike and I want to see everything this place has to offer beyond the Instagram photos. All these cenotes are beautiful. I see all the girls who are dressed up in the cenotes and taking the sexy photos. No, I want to scuba dive to the bottom of the deepest cenote and I want to see what's down there. And then like, I want to like fill in the blank with all the most unique things that I personally would just love to do an adventure. And if I could go back and tell, actually Christine in her early twenties was still deathly afraid of the ocean and being in the water. Mm. And I would tell her that not only did you rock Tulum in this way, but you got tired of it and you left and you left in the middle of the trip. And you went somewhere else because you were just tired and ready for something else. And you went to Playa del Carmen and you swam, you, know, you not swam, you scuba dived with all of the bull sharks out there. And it was an amazing experience and you did it all for you. And this is something that you did and you learned so much more about yourself. And you were on this trip for, you were on this, I was on this trip for like a month. And at that point I was like, okay, now I miss my boyfriend. I'm going to go home. And then I went back and it's like, if I would have told her that that's how she traveled now, she'd be like, really? Like, you know, all of those things. Like, did you at least take the Instagram photos too? And I was going, you know, of course I didn't have to take the Instagram photos, but I also spoke very honestly about it. And that's another yeah. thing that she wouldn't believe. I was like, I would tell her, you know, you spoke very honestly about what you experienced and what other people should expect in a way that helps people to travel there or not travel there, if that's the right choice for you. And over half a million people have watched that video and made a decision, the right decision to travel there or not to travel there. Because it's like, no one knows what to expect truly when they go. <sighs> all right, tell me about your trip. <laughs> yeah, as I was listening to you, I had all kinds of thoughts. I, you know, I could, I could obviously like pick a trip, but I think like, I just think like if I was talking to my younger self and she knew that, you know, at I'm 41 at 41, I've crashed a wedding in Turkey. <laughs> I've, I've crashed a quinceanera in Bogota, Colombia. I celebrated holy, like literally in it in India covered in paint. My hair is still pink two months <laughs> later. I've ridden camels countless times through the Sahara desert. I've been in nine hot air balloons in various countries. So rad. Like, I don't think I would believe myself. Like I would have, and it's not just like checking those things off a list. It's like, you can't, you can't, I mean, you could put like crashing a wedding in another country on your list and you should. Um, <laughs> but those are like the things that, you know, you can't, yeah, do it. Um, don't get in trouble, but don't get arrested. As long as you don't get arrested, you're fine. Um, yeah, so you can get in trouble, but don't get arrested. <laughs> yeah. That's where we draw the line. Just just enough trouble. But it's like, the, the, those are the things that, I don't know, it's just like priceless experiences that you can't, you can't replicate. You can't put a price on. Yeah. Those are always the things I think of when I think of going, you know, to, when I think of Colombia, I literally think of the one night that I, that I crashed at Quinceanera. I've been there several times. I've done lots of amazing things. And yet that's the moment that comes to mind. And you know, same thing with Turkey. I think about that night that I crashed a wedding with strangers and found out that they were crashing the wedding too. Um, <laughs> I, I thought it was their friend's wedding. Nope, it wasn't. But those are the things that like stick with me. And I, I guess I would just tell her to like branch out, take chances and go to places that aren't typical because I think when I was younger I only wanted to go to places that seemed seemed familiar slash 
safe, you know, and really when I say say safe, I think the word that I really mean is familiar. The Mm -hmm. things I've seen people do, the things that seem the most like me and my life and the people around me. I think I used to really stick to like Latin America, Mexico, Europe. You know, I think everyone wants to go to Europe and and Europe is great. I love Europe. There's so much variety there, but it is very Westernized Mm. and it's very similar to the United States in a lot of ways. I mean, there are obviously a lot of differences, but like, it's still, it's not very extreme when it comes to our differences. And I think I, I, a lot of people like Europe is kind of that next step because it's far away and you get a lot of variety and different foods and whatever, different cultures, but it's not that different. Then you go somewhere like Morocco or India, you go to some places that like really give you the culture shock. And like, once you do that, you really like can't turn back. Mm. I feel like once you've really seen some differences and you see, see how people live in a completely different way. Now I go back to like, like I love Portugal. I think it's amazing. I've been there a couple of times. The second time I went though, I had just come from Morocco, I think. And then I went to Portugal and I was like, I didn't feel the same way mm-hmm. anymore about Portugal. I still love it. It's great, but it doesn't give me that like intense, like, Oh my God, like I'm doing just this cool shit. <laughs> I don't, I don't get that same feeling when I'm, you know, sitting in Barcelona, like, eating tapas like yeah it's great but um like being in the sahara desert is better for me so yeah i just think like trying something different don't being don't be afraid to go somewhere that's really different that is going to make you uncomfortable yeah i think people like really want to sit in like comfort when they travel they Mm -hmm. don't want to feel uncomfortable physically or emotionally they don't want to see difficult things they don't want to and I'm of course generalizing here but you know I think they just they want to kind of like see what they already know and I think the whole point of travel is to see what you don't already know like what you're not familiar Mm. with what's completely different from you those to me are the most empowering and transformational experiences that I've had and I've learned even in the last like three years I've really branched out with travel and going to different places and now I'm like what's the most obscure thing I can find like that's Mm -hmm. what I'm looking for now I think that's really powerful I think about the uncomfortable moments I've had both in travel and life and how much stronger that makes you and also like I'm just listening to some of the things you're saying and the perspective you have from having put yourself out there to try all of these things and it's it's an amazing, it's amazing what you've done. And I think I also, at the same time, like I think about both this podcast and how I create, where it's like, even bringing it back to my Tulum example, like when I was adventuring through Tulum, it wasn't just trying to get that beautiful, perfect Instagram photo of me in my bikini. It was also me sweating, sitting on the side of the road with a neck fan on, trying to fly my drone while there's ants all over my legs and there's mosquitoes biting my neck and and there's traffic and dust and like all I look like a hot mess. But those moments too, or the moment before I get into the cenote, and cenotes are so magical, but these mm-hmm. places are cold as fuck. And like getting into the cenote sucks the first time. Mm-hmm. And there's fish in there that will bite you. And I talk, like, I talk about these things openly on social media. Like, this is what's happening. That cenote is cold AF and there's fish in there that are going to bite me, but I'm getting in anyway. Like, I'm not going to miss out on this chance. I'm not going to miss out on the chance to fly my drone here. I'm not going to miss out on the fill in the blake. And it's almost like seeing others doing it and doing it not necessarily, at least for me, not necessarily with 100% confidence, not even sometimes with 50% confidence, Sometimes not even really wanting to do it, but knowing that it's worth it to try might inspire someone to go be that 1% more badass and to try the thing. You know, I even think about meatball. Like I was recently on a trip in which I was in one of my most favorite places in the world that I travel back to all the time, which is Crystal River, Florida, where there's manatees, manatees, Mm. these amazing beautiful floating potatoes that make me feel like my summer bod is looking great all the time. And we were out there kayaking and snorkeling with the manatees. And like Meatball grew up in the Bronx, 
Like he can barely him snorkeling is like one of the most ridiculous things. He's like constantly frustrated with the mask, like can barely swim. I like put an inner tube on him and like, he's just uncomfortable. But I show this aspect of him. And what was interesting was we were out there and there's a lot of places in the world I get recognized and Chris River is one of them, but it wasn't me that got recognized. It was a man in a kayak with his whole family. And he points at Lou, points at me, Paul, and he goes, I saw you on YouTube. And he goes, I'm here because I was uncomfortable in a kayak with a snorkel, swimming with manatees. But I brought my whole family because I saw you doing it. Aww. And he's like, and I said, I could do it too. And, uh, uh, and really, like, if you're listening to this and you're someone who's not even over 40 or divorced, but just considering taking the trip and you're curious about other ways of travel, whether alone or somewhere far and unique or in theory, potentially with us, we're about to have a badass adventure together on these group trips. Do it, like do it. It's hard to like find all the content where people talk as honestly as you and I do about some of the other aspects of what these trips look like, but it's like, it's always worth it, you know, for what you learn and how, and, and like the perspective it gives you about life, it's always worth it, mm -hmm. you know? Look at me, I'm all teary eyed. I know. Right? All, look at me all like look, I'm glossy eyed. <laughs> That's it's so true though. Like I'm I always say I'm not special. Like, I mean, of course I'm like a special snowflake. That's what my mom tells me, but I'm not we're not special in that like only people like us can travel. I That's just cool. wrote I just wrote this email. I just realized the other day I hadn't emailed my email list in two months. Not Two? Good. Yeah, more like four months. Go on. Um, well, you at least post content. Like I go dark. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the last email I had written was in March, and it was a super vulnerable moment for me. And I wrote to my whole email list, which is like 2,500 people, about how terrified I was to go to India. Uh, yeah. And I was going, but I was going scared and I was going unprepared. And I kind of, I just kind of like went through like my, my mental state at that time about how anxious I was about going. And that I had a boy, I dated a guy from India for three years. Like I own a travel company. I should not be scared. And it wasn't, I was scared because I thought something was going to happen to me. It was just like so many unknowns. I wasn't prepared. Um, the company I was going with hadn't really done a great job of like preparing me for, what to expect. I didn't know if I needed vaccinations. I was like, am I, am I going to get hepatitis? Like I had so many questions in my head of like what I needed to do for this trip on a very short time frame. I decided to go two weeks in advance, um, which is a pretty tight timeline for some, some place like India. Anyway, I, I just kind of like went through like, this is, this is how I'm feeling and I'm a professional traveler. So it really brought me to like, imagine how, these people on my trips feel this woman who's never left the country and she's going to a place like Cuba. Like it really brought me to like, okay, this is also like why I do what I do and why I'm here to hold people's hands and why I'm here to say, I got you. I'm here with you. I'm doing it with you. And I'm helping you prepare because I get what that feels like. And I still feel it sometimes. Like mm -hmm. I'm still scared. Sometimes I'm yeah. still like, probably shouldn't be jumping off this mountain right now with a stranger, but I'm going to do it anyway. I do shit scared, but like, I think people look at people like us and they just think we're fearless and that's not true. Mm -hmm. We just do it anyway. You we just do it work, anyway. We just do it anyway. That's yeah. the difference. You just do it anyway. I I also think you're a special snowflake, Thank but you. yeah, <laughs> scared. Yeah. Like that's how, you know, I, I was having this frustrating moment in which I was both thankful for the moment and frustrated by it. But I was recently, uh, I just got off yet again, another Virgin Voyages cruise, and I was recognized by a lot of people. And one of the girls that I was talking to, who was inspired by some of the other more adventurous travel that I do, was trying to explain to me why I'm capable of doing that. And, and it was because like, oh, well, you can do that because, and then like, I don't even remember what she said, but I'm just like, no, I was basically trying to convince her I am a normal human being just like you. Like, I don't have a special superpower. I didn't have somebody holding my hand through something to be able to go try that scary thing. I didn't, 
like fill in the blank. Like, no, I, I earned, I earned the guts to go do these things. Like I do them scared. I still, you know, have to muster up the hyping myself in that moment to go do it. And what's interesting is for the people who have traveled with me and see me doing the things that I'm scared to do, they'll see me go through my routine of hyping myself. And I do this not only for before I even press record on these videos or podcasts, because it also takes guts to put these stories out there about talk, speaking honestly about my divorce, speaking honestly about how I was raised to say yes to whatever the man in the relationship says. And uh, uh, Meatball does not get that. I say no to him all the time. Like, oh, we ain't doing that. <laughs> I ain't doing that. You can do that. I will be over here. Anyway, it takes guts to do these things. And yet at the same time, it takes the practice of doing them over and over to get to those really big badass moments. And at the same time, I also see this podcast episode as an opportunity of you and I together reaching our hands out and offering a come come with us. Like I think about when I've done travel with Meatball and brought him to somewhere I've been to before time and time again, and I get the opportunity to see this place I've traveled to before through his eyes. And mm -hmm. I get to see him light up at the, oh my gosh, like this Bahamas sunset is insane. And I'm like, yes, I've been watching it for 26 nights straight. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take him to like my favorite, like conch shack where we'll eat fresh conch on the beach. And he'll just be like, this is so delicious and amazing. And for me, I'm just like, wow, I've been eating this every day for 26 days. Like I I've gotten used to it. And now I get to like re-experience what that magic is like for him. And when you bring someone on these group trips where you've done it before. And I'm so excited for you to take me on a group trip. You get to show someone what you love so much. And then you get to see them travel and experience it for the first time. And it's like, we are seeing that for the first time again. And it's such a cool feeling. Like it's such a Absolutely. Cool feeling. Yeah. I always say that is one of my favorite parts of group trips is that you get to watch. It's like, you know, I don't have kids, um, but you know, they say like, oh, watching things through your kid's eyes, like mm -hmm. seeing your child seeing something for the first time. Like, that's how I feel with my group trip babies. Like, yeah. you know, you get to, it's like, yeah, I've been in eight hot air balloons and they're cool and I love them, but I will never get to have that for the first time again. But yeah. I get to see 14 people see it for the first time once a year. And that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, And getting, it also like gives me a little bit of like, perspective on like okay the, yeah I've done this a lot but this is still a really cool thing like yeah this is still like like how fortunate am I to be able to say I've done this nine times and I'm like oh yeah 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 just another hot air balloon or you know I think we forget things like that and then someone will be like you realize like what you're saying right like you go to the Sahara Desert twice a year like what that's your job <laughs> I think I think like we we take I don't want to say take it for granted but it becomes very normal to us so we kind of like don't think like, oh my God, this is what we get to do for jobs. Like, this is what we do. We make money at it. Like, we don't just get to do it. But we get to make money at it. And it, it gives you like that perspective. Like, oh yeah, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. This is not normal. Um, mm -hmm. And it's amazing to get to see that through other people. Because I think if I was just going myself over and over and over and I wasn't with other people, I wouldn't have that same appreciation or that same reminder, I guess. Yeah, I love that. Oh, come be our children and join us on a group trip. In our next episode, we're actually talking a little bit more about literally what that looks like. And don't forget, this is part of a series. There's more to it. Uh, actually, Laura, tell us, where can people find you? You can find me at lauraerickson.com. No K in Erickson. Um, I have to say it every time. Or you're going to find something else. A bird watcher. A birdie, a good, a good bird, bird watcher. Yeah. Bird watcher. She she seems cool. I feel like I need to meet her. Um <laughs> she probably doesn't know about me, but I know about her. Um otherwise Instagram, Lola Whiskey, Facebook, the Laura Erickson. I love this. Thanks for doing this with me. Thanks for having me. One of the things I reflect on about this episode is just how rewarding the travel is that we do these days. And it's not even about trying to show us living our best lives, having done this epic vacation. Look at me. It's, it's really about traveling 
to learn about new cultures and connect with the people of that destination and learn, learn something new and experience something different. This is, yes, it, it, it can be a vacation for you if you come on a group trip with us, but this is what we call traveling. So join us in the next episode because we'll break it down. So actually, no, we won't break it down. We'll give you a high level of some of the things to get excited for with Mexico City because I'm headed there later this year and I am so excited for my first true trip to explore this place with Laura and to figure out what it is and what kind of adventure we will be bringing you on. If something in today's podcast episode spoke to you, please leave a review. It really does help to distribute this to more people and share it. It really does help connect with Laura, connect with me. I'm at Christine Lozada everywhere. And in the meantime, check out the info on the group trips in the show notes below and go forth. Be badass and we'll see you in the next adventure. Ciao.